Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Liam is here. Say hi, Liam. Uh, we're on our way to Singapore because we got shows this week, like starting tomorrow in Singapore, then Bangkok, then Hong Kong before we go on to Europe. But first, before I hop on this flight, which is boarding probably in the next 22 minutes, I uh, would like to quickly address drama. I don't even know why there's drama, honey. I'm all the way down here, down under, just doing my job, being a professional. <laughs> And there is drama. So apparently a lot of people are interested or um, paying attention to this drama. So let me, it, you can't always respond to everything. And honestly, I think this is probably the silliest thing ever. I really don't even want to be doing this video responding to this. But at least the people and so many people are forming an opinion. Um, I would like for people to be forming it based on facts. Okay? Facts. Not falsehoods. Not uh, exaggerations, uh, not as uh, they write fake news. No, let's just do it on the facts and let's get that together really quickly. I'm going to try to make this super fast and super quick because I love you guys so much. And I just want y'all, everyone who continues to be in this journey, this ride with me, to know that they're rolling with somebody that's a real person and um, that will always tell you the truth. And that's what I'm about to do right now. Now, what I'm talking about is this uh, new Jasmine Masters versus Shangela drama, which, girl, I'm over here on tour, 184 cities. I'm not interested in drama, nor do I ever even try to bring that to anybody else. I have enough time, like, enough things to do, like, wash my tights and my hose and get on to the next gig, okay? But that being said, uh, let's lay this down really quickly. So, Jasmine Masters, by the way, uh, no shade to Jasmine Masters. I understand from this video that she recently made that she is not a super fan of mine at this moment, or friend or sister. Or she has a certain feelings about me. Okay, that's fine. I understand that. Uh, but... I would always respect, and I invite her to still do this with me. Baby, you got my number. Call me. Call me. Apparently, based on this video, there are some feelings that Jasmine has had since we filmed the RuPaul Drag Race Hall of Slay Spectacular. Okay? We filmed this show back in August. Okay? August. So, if there was an issue that we had back in August, I would love if she called me up. Sister, you got my number. Call me. You have been in this game for a good hot minute and love you to death. And you know, and I think any of my RuPaul's Drag Race sisters or anybody, friend, anybody, if you have an issue with me ever, trust me, it's probably something that was very unintentional. I have no reason to want to do anything ill or harm toward anybody or make you feel bad in any way. If you have something, call me, girl. You got my number. Call me, text me. And you know I'm going to pick up the phone for you because usually what you have to say is mighty funny and entertaining. So I'm going to pick up. Call me, okay? Um, so now let's go to the Hollis Lay Spectacular, which, by the way, I'm so, like, of course, it's just really annoying in a little bit of a way that we have to, like, talk about drama related to the Hollis Lay Hollis Lay Spectacular in that the this Christmas episode my friend Joella Puss was just telling me this the other day because so many people have been like oh it wasn't what I expected okay got that but how cool is it that we had drag that we had trans visibility that we had something super gay on mainstream television like a network like VH1 and with queens and, and just being very gay for the holiday. When I was growing up, we didn't have that. So it was really cool to even, even with all the RuPaul songs, it was still cool to see that on TV. So I hate to even bring that moment down with this particular drama. But before I get on this flight to Singapore, let's go ahead and get it together real fast, okay? Facts. Number one. Jasmine Masters has said that, you know, the reason uh, that she wasn't able to do her confessionals, um, because we filmed the episode three days over the course of three days. First day was a rehearsal day, not filmed. Second day was the runway day. And third day was the workroom looks and little dancing thing and all that. Okay, cool. She said, oh... Shangela made me so mad because she was so late and I had to wait on her and she wasted my time that I my makeup had all sweated off. Yo, yo, makeup sweated off. Okay. 
Okay, now this is what I'm talking about facts. Okay. And Jasmine, honestly, I don't even want to be having this conversation on a live forum, but I've tried calling you and you have not responded to my calls and texts. So, that being said, I'm going to just do it right here. Um, switch your makeup off. First of all, anybody who's ever been to RuPaul's Drag Race and you can ask the dolls, y'all know that they keep that studio freezing cold because they don't want RuPaul to sweat, okay? Don't get no sweats on RuPaul's head. They don't want no sweat on RuPaul. So that, that place is freezing, okay, always. Honey, now there's a doll, there are a couple dolls in there that sweat, okay? And I can say this because this is my friend, and she knows sometimes Latrice will sweat. Got it. She'd be like, baby, turn on that air right now. And lovely. Okay, how is it Latrice and all the girls can stay throughout the day and look lovely and not sweat off all their makeup because of the time? That ain't right. That You know that ain't true. That ain't, girl, that is not true. If you did sweat your makeup off, it's because you tied a gold lame trash bag thing over your face. That's why you sweat unless you put on a bag on your face and tied it. That's why you sweat. Release, let the air it. I don't know. It's not my thing. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not. A, I don't even understand. Okay, whatever. Next thing. Um, you were waiting on me for 45 minutes. That's not true either. Uh, so here's the late thing, okay? Day one of rehearsal, I did arrive after the other girls. Probably like an hour and a half, okay? Now, some people may say, girl, you were late. But what I would ask you guys to do is ask, why? And the girls should know this because I meant I told it to them. But if it didn't get conveyed to everybody, that's not my fault. I had a gig in Chicago the night before. Remember, 184 city tour around the world this year. I was not even available on Sunday for the rehearsal. I moved my show on Sunday. Thank you, Roscoe's, for moving my market days. Chicago, Roscoe's show, and the fans in Chicago know. Shangela was originally supposed to be there on Sunday. We moved the show to Saturday so that I could fly home and film the Hollisley Spectacular rehearsal on Sunday. My flight landed at, like, noon. Everyone else's call time was 11 or something. It's in the times. I landed after the call time. So I literally had to get in a car and take it straight from the airport with all my luggage to the set, go right in and start rehearsing with everyone. They weren't super concerned because I can pick up choreography pretty, pretty quickly, thankfully. And everyone did. But I would respect everyone's time. I just landed and came straight from the airport. That's all. So if they didn't tell everybody that I landed and came straight from the airport... Okay, that's not my fault, but hey, you can ask me. Bitch, why are you late? I would say, girl, I was at the airport. I just came straight here. I haven't even been home to wash my butt, okay? Next. Uh, she said that they waited on, I was late the next day. Yes, I came in uh, maybe an hour after the rehearsal started the second day because we had finished at midnight the night before. Because I had just flown in, I had no time to get all my stuff packed and be back at 7 a.m. the next morning. Just wasn't going to happen. I communicated that to the producers. They told me, you can come in at 9. That's it. If they didn't tell everyone else that, I'm not even blaming them or anybody. I'm just saying that's the situation, okay? Okay, so I come into the rehearsal. We rehearsed. No drama. Nobody had no drama with me. We had a lovely day on set. The last day, everyone was there on time the last day. That's on a Tuesday. Because I remember we all sat and ate eggs and sausages together. Okay? We had the breakfast. Lovely. After that, we started getting in our workroom looks. I was the last to walk in the workroom. I wasn't late. That's just the order they put us. Jasmine was right before me. So I don't know about what she was waiting on. I don't know where that comes from. It's not true. Then she said, there was a moment when I walked out. Yes, there was. Around 6 p.m., that's not lunchtime, that's totally 6 p.m., after about 10 hours of filming that day, I honestly was overwhelmed. So when they were moving the cameras around, I said, I need a moment, and I stepped outside. I said, I'm not going back in until I have a chance to have a conversation with the producers because today has been a huge amount of lot. But if y'all need to go ahead and keep filming, please do. Please. And y'all, listen, I don't have to make any of this up. Call anybody. If you got Latrice, Kim, Eureka, Mayhem, Sonique, um, all the dolls. Who else am I missing? Kim, Eureka, Mayhem, Sonique, myself. Jasmine and that's it Latrice 
Anyway, you'll see the special call. <laughs> call the girls. And they will let you know. I surely did step out and I told them, please keep filming. I have to have a conversation, a business conversation to take care of myself with the producers real fast. I had that conversation. It cost, it take about 20 minutes, tops. And at the end of that conversation, I'm sorry, at the end of that conversation, we agreed that for us to continue, not only myself, but every other queen in that room would be compensated for the additional hours we were doing. That's all I wanted. I wanted them to recognize that we were there for a very long time, and they did, and then they compensated everyone in the room, okay? Except Jazz and Masters. Because during this conversation, she came outside and was like, girl, you need to bring your, come on back in here. And I was like, whoa, you're coming into this conversation at the wrong time. And we had a quick little, little heated exchange. Little. And then she got her luggage and she said she wanted to go to her car and smoke a blunt. And she rolled out. And that was it. They said, she's not here anymore. We're going to keep rolling. And we did. And it was great. I had a great time at the Holiday Spectacular. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the great comments about the looks and everybody who helped to put everything together with me. Thank you. And honestly, I felt bad that Jasmine in that moment felt that, you know, I was wasting her time or however. And she felt she needed to leave and walk out on everybody on set. And we all continued for the next three hours, filmed the rest of the special, and went on about our business. And it was a wrap. We high-fived, we hugged, we hit it. Now, after that, it was done. But I still felt like, you know what? I like Jasmine. I like her a lot. I consider her my homegirl, my friend. So, as a, I knew that we'd had a little quick heated exchange, I sent her a text message. She's right. I reached out to her. Here it is. Liam, I texted to Liam. Here is the text from me to Jasmine. It says, on Thursday, August the 16th. Here we go. Hold on. Let me get right here. Hey, sis. Shangela here. I just wanted to call and apologize about the heated exchange between us yesterday. You know, I truly value your friendship and your sisterhood. And yesterday was a very high emotional day. To be honest, I felt like we had been walked into an episode uh, and everything was not given up front. I felt trapped at the moment. And by the 12th hour on the third day, I just had to have a moment for myself. So I walked out to discuss with the producers that... We needed to have a, a, another conversation about what was going on. You just happened to walk right into the middle of the sandstorm. And I apologize if I came off rude to you. It was not meant to be directed at you. It was not meant to be directed at you. So for that, I apologize. And then I wrote, and I probably should have mentioned to y'all that I was walking out before I stepped outside. I hope that you will forgive me as I really do enjoy our friendship. And I didn't mean to be disrespectful in any way. That's the whole text right there. Okay. That's all of it right there. She responded to me on Thursday. Now, that text was sent on a Tuesday. She, was it? Yes. Yeah, let's see. Hold on. No, that text was sent on Thursday. She responded to me on the 30th. That is four plus six. Ten days later, she responded, we can talk tomorrow. Okay. Great. And never another conversation. I called her. The phone went to voicemail. She never responded back to me. So... To me, that was it. I saw this woman at Latrice's wedding, uh, which was a beautiful day. Uh, I love you, Latrice and Chris. They had a beautiful wedding in Atlanta during New York Drag Con, which was in September, like last weekend in September. I saw Jasmine there. I was like, hey. She was like, hey, girl. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Great. And we went on. So I didn't think there was no issue. So I'm really shocked to have all this drama going on. But at the end of the day, here's the deal. I feel bad about the way she feels, but I can't let it stop me from doing my job. I'm over here doing my tour. I'm meeting fans. I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming to each and every show. We are pounding out these 184 cities around the world, and we're going to keep on going. I wish her all the best. She has All Stars 4 coming up next week, and I would hope that she doesn't allow her perception of what others are doing to her to keep her back from doing her best job on that show. Good luck, sis. I wish you all the best. And uh, to all y'all that are interested in the drama, for me, there is none. But I just wanted to clarify this and make sure that people know that I'm not someone who disrespects people's time. And even for that 20 minutes that I was outside talking to producers, when I walked back in after we got everything settled, I told all the other girls who were there. And Jasmine mentioned this. Ladies, I apologize. I probably should have mentioned to you that I was going to walk outside for a second. I just need that moment for myself. And the girl said, it's all right, sis. We get it. And we proceeded to do the gig. 
which, by the way, love the Hollis Way Spectacular. I know it may not be what y'all wanted. Bitch, I was coming for another crown. And even though they didn't give it to me, I still walked in with mine. And because I didn't really win, or I guess we all won, I guess that means I can still come back another season. Maybe. We'll see. But uh, thank y'all for watching this. I appreciate it. And I hope that... Any, if there's any lesson in all this, if there's any, can she hug? Uh, she's just stealing my shine. <laughs> um, so I'll speak a little louder, but I'll just say, look, let this be a lesson. In life, people are going to bring drama to you, or they may have a perception of something that is different than your perception of it. Always feel free to have a conversation. Don't let communication break down if you can. I feel like I've done my part in reaching out to her. I I've tried to straighten out what she feels was a disrespect to her, but I would never want to disrespect her or anyone else from our team. I love our team. I love all the queens, and we're very, I am at least very thankful to be a part of RuPaul's Drag Race and everything we continue to do. So, Miss Jasmine, go out there, slay the game, girl, do the memes, do the videos. I live, and I wish you all the best. And um, call me if you need to talk. You can call me. Okay. Lots of love, guys. And don't let drama to keep y'all down. Go out there and stay on the grind. Keep working, keep winning, and hallelujah. Happy hallelujah days. Bye. Now, how do I end this? Oh, comments. Hi, guys. Love y'all. Bye.